very good morning and a warm welcome to St. James Church, those of you here and those joining us over the internet. I hope those in church, you can stay after the service for refreshments just next door in our parish centre. We turn to the green service card to worship and pray together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray our prayer of preparation, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, Go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Turning to the reverse of the newsletter, we'll find the collect and Bible readings for the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Uh, 
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord says this, Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, or your ox or your donkey, or any of your livestock, or the resident aliens in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. One Sabbath Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abatha was high priest and ate the bread of the penitent presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good, or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life? or to kill, but they were silent. He looked around at them with, with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus, how to destroy him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. Hands up if you're good at following rules. Well, I suspected as much. I was told this story of Daddy, Mummy and Baby Balloon. And Daddy and Mummy Balloon had a problem because every night without fail, after they were asleep, Baby Balloon would waft out of his bed and float through to their room and get in with them. And they decided they needed to stop this. So they said, Baby Balloon, we need to talk to you about this. There's no more getting into bed with Daddy and Mummy Balloon at night. You must stay in your own bed. Baby Balloon was very upset. And that night, they all went to their own beds. Mummy and Daddy were a bit closer than they'd been able to be for a while. And Baby Balloon took to his own bed. Woke in the middle of the night and thought, I'll just pop through to Daddy and Mummy's bedroom. So floated through. Oh, there's not quite as much room between Daddy and Mummy as there normally is. What am I going to do? So Baby Balloon decided to let some air out of Mummy Balloon's balloon. No, I still can't quite fit. So let some air out of Daddy Balloon's balloon. No, I still can't quite fit. So let lots of air out of his balloon and slithered into the gap and went to sleep. Well, of course, in the morning, they all woke up and Daddy and Mummy Balloon were very disappointed in Baby Balloon. And Daddy Balloon said, I'm so disappointed. You've let your mother down, you've let your father down. <laughs> and worst of all, you've let yourself down. <laughs> Following the rules. It's not always easy, is it? Because rules are about boundaries. And some rules are really important. The Ten Commandments, our first reading, touches on those. How often have we pleaded in our prayers that killings would stop in wars around the world, for example, because we believe as Christians that we should not kill. And it's difficult, it's complex. But the Ten Commandments offer us a framework which, thank goodness, is still at the heart of British and European law, and we pray always remains so. But then there are more rules, aren't there? Who's good at driving on the right side of the road? Do you know in Weybridge they're not always, and definitely not indicating on roundabouts, it's shocking. You never know where people are going outside of Morrison's, it's terrible. Rules are there, of course, to keep us safe, aren't they? To guide us, to help us do the right thing, to help us and other road users and pedestrians and other people. So rules can be there as a guide. But in today's Gospel, the rules were used in a rather different way. Now, the idea of a Sabbath day is wonderful. I have lovely glowing memories, I'm sure it wasn't really like this, of being a child when the shops weren't open and on a Sunday we'd go off to the park after church or we'd go to the beach in Sussex where we were or we'd go and do things as a family without the pressures today. Because I know from families just trying to arrange confirmation classes how hard it is to navigate family time. And the last thing I want us to do as church is to take away the last morsel of family time on a Sunday to do confirmation preparation when actually they don't get much family time. So we've kind of lost something there because the rules changed and the time was filled. But in today's gospel, it wasn't just about having rest and family time. It was really strictly applied by the Pharisees. Now think of the Pharisees in political terms of being so far right wing that they almost fall off the cliff. Everything is very literal and strict. And of course, the problem with those extreme places, I'd venture to say Islamic State were in that category, is that then you have extreme punishments. The irony being death. One of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. And yet they would seek to destroy Jesus because he wasn't following their rules so very strictly. 
Is it that Jesus is a rule breaker? No, that's not the point of the gospel. He's not a rule breaker, he's a liberator. His love for people is about liberating their relationships and feeding them spiritually, mentally and physically. The rules, he says, are there to guide you, not to inhibit you, not to hold you back in faith, not to hold you back physically, not to hold you back mentally. The rules are meant to be there to enable you to be the person God has made you to be. And the Pharisees and the Herodians don't like a bit of it because they want everyone on the tram lines because they think that's the way to keep people safe. But they're wrong. So that's the gospel context into which we can place our lives today. Now, the world is a rather different place. 2,000 years on, thank goodness, we don't have the Pharisees running the United Kingdom. We don't. But we do also need some form of tram lines to keep us sort of going in the right direction. And as a church, our parochial church council has been working on a document which has the unimaginative name, sorry, Diocese of Guildford, of Church Development Plan. Now I can see you're excited. A church development plan. Now we did talk a little bit about this at the annual meeting and it was in that document and we said we continue to work on it and we have been and we now have four goals which we're praying about and considering adopting formally before the Archdeacon visits us to inspect our church development plan. Think of it as a kind of vision plan or even better still, a set of kind of a planned route that we're going to try and follow over the next few years. And what's at the heart of that plan? Number one, enabling relationships to thrive, physically, spiritually, mentally. What do we mean by that? We want to be a church at the heart of Weybridge that is about people first. Our church development plan barely talks about the building. And there's a reason for that, because our development is actually not about physical things. It is about people. How do we as a church become much more integrated into the community that pass us every day? So every emphasis in our church development plan is about relationships relationships in our own families. How do we have the confidence to share our faith and be disciples today? And that's a rather challenging thing. How do we, as a church, reach out, sort of dissolve the walls of our building and allow our faith to touch the lives of people beyond and vice versa? How do we challenge our secularising culture? How do we offer faith in the midst of of such a demand for spirituality? How do we reach young people, children, families in a world where the demands upon them are like nothing we've ever seen before and meet them with love and hope and opportunity? How do we expand our services through the food bank, dementia care, through visiting our nursing homes, through pastoral ministry? And how do we join all of this together in our worship, where we're rooted in scripture and sacrament? Please pray about these things as we set new tram lines for our church. It's quite broad, it's exceptionally inclusive, and we believe it's about Jesus Christ's call to be disciples. But not disciples 2,000 years ago, Disciples in the 21st century with the challenges we face today. Go home and reread that gospel reading. In fact, I'd encourage you to think about all of the music for today's service, the prayers, the collect, the post communion prayer together with the Bible readings today, and think and pray about our church community. What would we like this church to speak of to those? who don't know faith. 
How do we want them to see us, perceive us and know us? How can we engage more with the lives of those around us in our own families, let alone our neighbours, our friends, our work colleagues, the people we see out in Waitrose or wherever we shop or whatever we're doing? Our church development plan is actually all about that. And finally, you're going to hear another phrase, because the Church of England loves little anacronyms at the moment. This one's called a PNP. It's not a political party, you'll be pleased to know, and nothing to do with general elections, thank goodness. The PNP is called the Parish Needs Process. Oh no, I can see the eyes again. Oh no, what's he going to tell us now? The Church of England is rolling out the parish needs process and in our diocese we're taking part in that at the moment and it's a way of looking at everything we're about as a church and partly measuring it so that the Church of England knows where it is. We have seen in our diocese a little bit of growth in numbers since Covid but we're not back at 2019 levels. So it's partly about measuring growth and looking to the future and saying, where do we need to have clergy and resources and so much more? And where are the places of opportunity and growth? I would venture to suggest that Tom coming to join us as a curate is a sign they believe the possibilities of growth are here. And they know that our community of Weybridge, according to the statistics, has got younger a lot younger in the last 10 years, considerably younger, against all of the predictions. And in fact, the ministry of this church must engage, particularly with those who are in their 20s, 30s and 40s. So we have a challenge. We're being resourced for the challenge. We're being tested against the challenge. We've come up with a church development plan we hope will meet some of that challenge. But we have to make sure we're all going in the right direction. And today's gospel reminds us that Jesus wants that direction to be the right direction for people's physical, mental and spiritual well-being. The rules are there to equip us and enable us to thrive as disciples today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, if you're able, would you please stand as we declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Father. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, we pray for our, our, our archbishop, bishops, and for all who lead us in the church. In particular, we pray for our church here in Weybridge, Father Damien and his family, our stewards, Jill and Steve, Lindsay and our choir, and all our volunteers who give their time, their skills, and their energy to keep the church and its community and its place within the community thriving. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. God of understanding, this week the texts speak of the Sabbath and keeping it holy. May we fully embrace the opportunities that this day presents, and may we utilize our time and resources in a way that reflects your love and glory. May the Sabbath be a testament to your grace and a testimony to the transforming power in our lives. And give us the time to consider St. James' Church Development Plan and the accompanying parish needs process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we ask you to help us receive the Sabbath as a precious gift from you. Help us to fully grasp the significance of this holy day and to appreciate its blessings. Grant us the wisdom and understanding to set aside time for rest, worship, and communion with you. We know that this day is a time of calm and renewal, so we ask you to protect us from the busyness and distractions of other days and allow us to experience your peace and your presence. We ask for your guidance to embrace the gift of the Sabbath in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, as we pass this Sabbath, may we pray for all persons suffering from war. May they be held in your loving care and protection and given the strength to endure the almost unendurable hardship. We know that we are part of the problems that the world faces, so we pray that those who lead us and other nations of the world will always try to solve issues in a peaceful way and intervene in the world's conflicts with forethought and common sense. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we contemplate what the Sabbath means to us, may we take some time to reflect on the words of Julian of Norwich. And in this, he showed me a little thing, the quantity of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand, as it seemed, and it was as round as any ball. I looked on it with my eye of understanding and thought, what may this be? And it was answered thus, it is all that is made. I marveled at how it might last, for I thought it might suddenly have fallen for, to nothing for littleness. And I was answered in my understanding, it will last and ever shall, for God loves it. And so have all things their beginning in the love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Today we pray especially for the recently departed David Landon and for those whose anniversary may fall around this time, including Barbara Simon, Chuck Gunner, Eric Brewer, and Sally Glacier. Finally, we pray for those who are in acute need and they are noted in your service sheet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, the for the sake, sake of your, your Son, Son, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand for the peace? Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness and the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. You will find the communion hymn is printed on the reverse of the newsletter. The offertory hymn on the reverse of the newsletter. The light of your love is shining in the midst. Thank you. Jesus, light of the world. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you with saints and with angels for ever praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ we go Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I published the bands of marriage between David Stephen Hawkins, single of the parish of Weybridge, and Debbie Norman, divorced also of the parish of Weybridge, with qualifying connection to Oatlands. This is for the first time of asking. If anyone knows any reason in law why these persons should not marry, you are to declare it now. Let us pray. Lord of love, we pray for David and Debbie. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day. Give them your love in their hearts throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A quick whiz through some notices on the newsletter. First of all, to say we have achieved the Silver Eco Church Award, which is very exciting. But there is a lot more work to do because it's not just getting to that point, but it's maintaining our momentum in trying to be wise stewards of everything that we have. And so that involves thinking now about our own homes and our own lives and the way in which we can, in our own way, make a difference. And I would suggest, with the coming general election, and I'm not making a political point, when we think about voting, we should be thinking about those who also share those values of respect and resource for human life and dignity and creation. What does it actually mean to care for our world and the environment, the place we call home? And as Christians, what can we do to ensure that we achieve that? So our Silver Eco Church Award points us in the right direction, but now we have the task of living that out in our lives. But well done to all involved in that process. Now then, please keep in your prayers Tom as he prepares to move to Weybridge in a few weeks' time and start a new life. He's a young man, it'll be his first home. Uh, it'll be uh, a whole new start for him and if you think about it everything is changing he's moving away from university from family he's moving to a new town a new context a new church a new community so please keep him in your prayers we are so blessed to have a young person coming among us to train in this way and uh, it's a real joy to welcome him so do keep him in your prayers and thoughts Thank you to those who give using the gift aid envelopes, which are around the church. I know a number of you do very faithfully. That really makes a massive difference to us. But don't forget to fill in your details on the front, because we don't know otherwise who that donation belongs to, and we can't claim that gift aid. So please fill in the information if you're using envelopes. If you want your life to be easier, join the parish giving scheme and then you don't have to do envelopes every week. It's automatically sorted for you. And I know Alan and Donna and Gretchen and Jill would be delighted to talk to you more about that if you would like to know about PGS. Lindy. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to have a quick request from the friends. I'm sure you've all seen on the news sheet about requests for bottles. That's because the friends are running the bottle tombola at the Weybridge Festival, which is on the 22nd of June. So we've actually only got two more Sundays. Um, we'd be very glad of your donations, either on the next two Sundays, or Nikki was happy to take them when the office is open. Now, I've had a look in the cupboard where we're storing it. At the moment, we've got over 100 bottles, which is good, but last year we probably had more like 250, and the friends were able to raise over £1,000. So we'd be grateful of your donations. I'm sure you've seen here it says, alcohol attracts positive attention. 
Now, as a doctor, I'm probably not supposed to approve of that, <laughs> but <laughs> it's certainly true. Um, and I have to say, gin and vodka are very popular, and we haven't actually got any of those donations. So if anybody felt they'd like to donate something to us, that would be really grateful for it. Thank you very much. Alan is coming up to share something which is so exciting. Hold on to your seats. No, don't hold on to your seats. Here's Alan. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, over the last two to three years or so, you'll, be, um, you'll have seen that we've made some reordering um, adjustments to the church. We've adapted certain areas in terms of making it more accessible and more flexible. And we've got the servery, we've got the automated doors to the north door, um, and um, uh, the next thing we would like to be able to do is to take out some of the pews so that we can make it even more accessible and even more welcoming to hopefully lots of people within the community, within the, way, the uh, wider Weybridge community. Um, you will be aware of this because we've been talking about it for a number of months now, um, but the time has come where we will be taking out some of the pews, particularly in All Souls Chapel. Um, and part of that will be replacing them with some much more comfortable chairs. Um, and um, that's really where we're coming to now, because um, what we'd like to do is to be able to invite you to help us um, support that part of the project um, in terms of um, perhaps making a donation to a chair fund. Um, what we would like to be able to do is say to you that um, <coughs> Any donations that you would like to give will be put towards this chair fund, and then um, we will report to you over the next couple of weeks, into, or over the next um, six to eight weeks, as to how well we're doing. Um, my friend Juliet here is going to be telling you exactly how that progress is going to be made, but just in terms of the logistics, uh, the cost of each chair is 150 pounds, um, and um, overall, uh, we're going to be getting quite a few of them because uh, they need to go into all cells, we need to go into the back, we're going to be having some spare chairs for when we have some special events. Um, so there's going to be quite a few chairs. Um, it's £150, I quite understand that's quite a lot of money, but if you do feel you'd like to be part of this project and support us, then any donation that you can give to this fund would be really gratefully received. Juliet. Fabulous chair board here. I'll just show the choir. For those of you who um, helped when we were raising money for the Access for All, you'll remember we had a, a tree which we covered in apples as we raised the money. And by the end of it, it was a very, very large amount of money, uh, we had the tree covered in apples. So we thought, well, that's a great idea because it helped you to see how we were getting on with the fundraising. So we're doing the same here for the chair fund. So this is one of the chairs that we're going to have. There are going to be four different types of chairs, but we selected this one. And as the money mounts up in the fund, we will stick little chairs around here so that over time we can see how the fund is growing. We're proposing that we have this um, campaign going for two months, uh, June and July. So um, we want to get as many chairs on there as we can in June and July. As Alan said, it's 150 pounds a chair. But if you, and if you would like to donate that, we'd be really grateful. However, if that's not something that you feel you can do, you can always make a smaller donation, or you can make a donation over several weeks. Um, but the main thing is, if we all pull together, we will be able to raise some funds towards this, which will be fantastic. Um, I'm taking the liberty of giving you all one of these when you leave today, and they'll be generally around the church. And what they are is it explains to you how you can make a donation. There are three ways. You can do the card reader at the back, you can do a bank transfer, or you can put some money in an envelope and put it in um, the wall safe or take it to the office. Please um, reference everything chair fund. Um, and if you can gift aid, that would be wonderful as well. 
So I hope you're all really excited about the reordering of the church. It is going to be great, and it's going to make the church work really well and be very welcoming to people. So please have a think. I'll give you a leaflet. You could take it home, have a think about it, and if you'd like to donate, we'd be very grateful. Thank you. Let's stand to pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ Jesus, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one and praise and love and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We sing our concluding hymn. to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.